Hey, thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk about a vintage macro lens that I'm really fond of. This is the 55mm F35 Micro Nikkor. It's a lens that um, has just an, an incredible reputation for image quality. They're um, pretty affordable and um, just do a fantastic job. So I'll talk about it. I also use it with a uh, an extension tube that gives me true one-to-one -one magnification and I've got a mount adapter here so it works on my micro four-thirds cameras. Anyway, I'm here in my uh, workshop actually where I work on all kinds of things from building musical instruments to working on cameras and lenses and, and even typewriters. I have too many hobbies. Anyway, um, we're going to put it on the uh, workbench. I've got a camera up above the workbench so we can look straight down at the bench and you can get a good close-up look at this lens. And we'll look at some images too so you can uh, see how it performs. Anyway, this is the 55mm F35 Micro Nikkor. Let's take a look. Okay, this is the 55mm F35 Micro Nikkor from Nikon. Take the lens cap off here. I have on this the PK13 extension tube that gives us one-to-one -one magnification and the lens adapter so I can use or the camera adapter so I can use this on micro four-thirds. So let's take that off and let's separate this. And this um, Nikon lenses, if you've ever used Nikon lenses, they're kind of backwards. They bayonet on counterclockwise. So that's that's a little different. I, I started out in my film day shooting Canon SLRs and when I switched to Nikon I had the worst time because the lens is all mounted in the you know rotating in the opposite direction. But this is a really a great lens as you can see here there's you know magnification and footage scales here so if you if you look you have your feet and meters uh, on the bottom two scales here but up above you have a magnification scale and so Actually, this level right here is the, is the magnification without the PK13 extension tube, and it says PK3 or 13 up here, and it shows the magnification if you have the extension tube. So this is really nice if you're wanting to set specific magnification uh, levels, and you can see at the maximum here you have a let me get a little closer here if I can get the lens to focus. You have two to one without the extension tube and one to one with, and so you can actually determine specific magnification um, amounts with this footage scale. Now this stops down, you know, it goes from F35 to F22. And I, I typically tend to use this around F56 or F8. Um, it gives me good sharpness and, and uh, it's, uh, this lens is just known for its image quality. Now this is an AI version, which means a little bit later, it's got the rubber focusing ring. Um, it has this ledge right here. If you're using it on a Nikon film camera, this actually engages the metering. Um, and then this little fork on the top here, uh, if you have a much older Nikon, um, like one of the original Nikon Fs with the photomic meter, this will engage the metering on that. So this is called an AI series lens. There is a later version called an AIS that has the AIS, and I forget where it is around the, the around the mount here, but there's a little cutout, a little dished out place that um, sets the uh, maximum aperture of the lens in the metering of the camera. But for our uses on mirrorless cameras, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can use this with or without the extension tube by using a, a lens ca you know, camera adapter. Now I shoot micro four thirds cameras and I use a lot of these Photosy um, adapters. You can see this one says Nikon or NIK-M43. It means it'll fit Nikon lenses to micro four thirds. Um, so this will allow you to mount this you know, directly on your Micro Four Thirds mirrorless camera. And um, if you have other mirrorless cameras, you know, Sony, Fuji, you know, Nikon, um, Canon, whatever mirrorless camera, then you can get adapters for these. And these adapters on eBay, I think I've paid anywhere from $10 to $20 for them. They're not expensive. And this Photosy brand is, is a very affordable brand and yet I've, I've purchased quite a few of them and they have worked just fine. The only thing I do find about a lot of these less expensive lens mounts is when you focus the lens to infinity it will tend to go a little bit past infinity so if you're 
using this for normal photography where you would focus at infinity, you kind of have to be aware that it might focus just a tiny bit past infinity. And they do that so that some lenses, depending on the on the lens, if you have a lens that doesn't quite actually make it to infinity, they want to make sure that you're actually hitting infinity, at least hitting infinity. So um, they've defaulted to going slightly past. I have a couple of these that I've put shims under the lens mount to make it stop exactly at infinity, but that's that's a lot of work. So anyway, this is the lens. Like I say, it comes way out here. You don't really need a lens hood with this. It's 52 millimeter, but you don't really need one because you can see the front element is, is recessed quite a ways up in there. And um, this, uh, this lens just does a fantastic job in terms of image quality. Um, I've really enjoyed using it. The lens has been around, this design has been around for a long, long time. Um, and there's several, like say, variations or iterations of this lens. The um, earlier ones will have a scalloped focusing ring. Um, and later ones will have the rubber like this. There is even a um, an F2.8 version of it that is uh, equally good and maybe a little bit more expensive. And Nikon makes other uh, macro lenses, like they make a 105 macro, I think it's an F4 macro lens. That's just a, it's a fantastic um, lens. Also, if you want the longer focal length, it would definitely be a good choice. So this lens is noted for its image quality. And when we look at some of the pictures that I've taken with it, I think you'll see that. And while it is, you know, completely manual focus, there's no autofocus with this, I think a lot of people that do macro tend to manual focus anyway. You know, you'll, you'll basically set the lens at a particular magnification and then carefully move the camera back and forth until it's in focus. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty, com even with, you know, the, the newest macro lenses, that's a pretty common, um, way of doing this. Now, the lens design on this is, uh, it's got five elements in four groups. It's uh, what they call a spherical design. Um, doesn't have any aspheric elements or anything, you know, like you see on a lot of modern lenses. Um, but it, it's a, it, like I say, it's, a, it's an image design or a lens design rather that just produces fantastic image quality. So it, um, it, it's just got, um, a lot of attributes and you can you can buy these things very inexpensively so anyway it's um, not too heavy weighs about eight and a half ounces um, like I said you don't need a, a lens hood for it if you um, get one of these though you definitely want to get this PK 3 or PK 13 extension tube let me get this to focus on this um, so this is Nikon PK 13 um, and it's 27 and a half millimeters, you know, from front to back, which doesn't really mean a whole lot. But when you mount this on the lens, then it basically double, doubles the magnification. Um, so this will allow you to focus this all the way out. You then have one to one magnification. What that means is that on your image sensor and your camera, the actual image would be on the sensor would be the same size as the act, as the subject you're photographing. So you know at one to two the image would be half the size of your subject. But at one to one both your image on the sensor and the subject are the same size. So that, that's kind of interesting to know just as a as a magnification thing. If you're using this let's say for copying uh, you know, negatives, film negatives or something, or artwork or something like that, that you need um, to know those exact reproduction ratios that might be handy. Um, I do use this a little bit for like 35 millimeter film um, negatives. If I want to um, make digital copies of them, I can put the negative on a light box and use this lens typically without the adapter. And I can uh, use it for a reproduction lens like that. It's very good image quality, nice flat field, and um, really good for that kind of work. So anyway, that's the 55 millimeter F35 Micro Nikkor with the PK13 extension tube, and in my case, this Nikon to Micro Four Thirds adapter. So that um, that's the lens. Let's take a look at some images, and um, then after we do that, you, we'll come back, and I hope you uh, can see when we look at these images that this thing just does a fantastic job.
Well, there you go. That's the uh, 55 millimeter Micro Nikkor and the PK-13 extension tube. They're great lens. If you shoot a mirrorless camera, this is definitely a vintage lens you want to have. Not only is the macro capability great, but it's also just a good general purpose, you know, 50 millimeter, 55 millimeter lens. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed looking at some of those images. If you have any thoughts or questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.